Hello, my friends and associates. Um, okay, Dr. Mohammed Nizami here with you again. Uh, this is probably the last session that I will have on the concept of designing and modeling a waveguide to uh, planar transmission line transitions. These are transitions as we have shown uh, are very critical in any SATCOM terminal or um, 5G transceiver. And most times it's uh, so extreme that, um, that it becomes a very, very, it plays a big role in the, uh, for instance, in the LMB performance of SATCOM uh, receivers. So um, like we have talked before, we, uh, we've presented several um, of these transitions. And uh, today we're gonna add one more transition, which the key in this transition that I'm gonna talk about today, uh, as if you recall, all the transitions that we have detailed uses a probe, printed probe on a PC board inserted into a waveguide while, um, while having a quarter of a wavelength left as a, uh, a back shorted uh, piece extension of the waveguide to act as an open circuit for the uh, probe. Please refer back to my other videos on this concept. So this uh, quarter wave uh, extension of the waveguide becomes a cumbersome uh, when uh, we, we want some uh, very low profile, low weight, um, applications, such as the case in uh, radars for uh, car safety and um, SATCOM um, um, on the move terminals. So let's just uh, let's just uh, go ahead and and just refresh ourselves. Today uh, we are going to be probably wrapping up this concept here. There's four videos, please. I recommend that you watch them from the beginning. Um, uh, we have finished the waveguide to strip line transitions. Uh, after today, we're gonna go on to uh, present several uh, videos on surface wave integrated uh, wave, uh, surface integrated wave guides and their transitions to strip line and micro strip line. And we'll present a couple of application on SIWs because they are uh, very becoming very um, common to use nowadays. And then we're going to go into radio combiners. Radio combiners, these are the bulky devices that uh, some of you have seen. We're going to go into some several designs of these and show their modeling and the trade-offs and differences between these uh, ones. Uh, we have a three, four varieties of these. Uh, and then show the uh, ortho mode uh, transducers. These are very, very critical elements of SATCOM terminals, uh, especially ones that uses different uh, transmitted information on, on vertical and horizontal polarizations. We will show the design of those. And then we will present three types of 3D filters that are often used in the gigahertz regions uh, that have unique characteristics that are unlike uh, a lot of the common filters that uh, lots of you see. And we'll wrap up finally with one GPS uh, uh, dual polarization, dual band antenna, just as a demo. Okay, so let's uh, get it back to our concept, which we're gonna wrap up today. Waveguide to macro strip line transition without back end shorts. Okay. And let me just present to you what that is. Oh. Just as a refresher, you remember that the transition from waveguide to a board uh, to process a received signal from a parabolic dish or, or an array aperture, usually what we do is place a probe somewhere in the middle of the waveguide at the maximum E field point, like we see here, okay? At the middle of somewhere in here. And 
backed off from the back end, the shorted back end by a quarter wavelength. And lots of you know that the quarter wavelength um, um, waveguide or transmission media, quarter wavelength means that if it's, it's really an impedance inverter. So if, it, if it's short in this case, then it will look like open from the probe in, in here, okay? Um, so, and that's critical because you would want this to look this to look open so that all the energy that leaks on this side comes back here in phase and adds coherently. But as you can see, this is bulky, of course. Uh, for instance, let's look at this LMB. This KU band LMB. And what we see here, just um, let's elaborate on this a little bit further. This is a little older generation LMB that uses DRO oscillators. These are dual band, as you can see here. Uh, the new, newer ones all use face lock loops. Um, <clears throat> but um, nevertheless, um, what we have in here, here's a probe on a square wave guide. And the waveguide from the back feeding this, and we go into LNA, this LNA, another additional LNA, and then onto a, uh, an interdigital filter, and then on to mixing with these LOs and going into an IF stage. And the IF stage, of course, you go out with um, an F connector in here. That's where the you're, you're basically plugging your um, satellite receiver. Okay, or you did. Take this down. This is an outdoor unit, of course, by the Barabla dish. So uh, as you can see in here, when, when you look at the lid, I don't have a picture for the lid on this, but the lid should have a cover in here, okay, with a, with a mouse hole for the probe, but it should have a quarter of a wavelength, short and cap. So, and in this case, of course, this is a, uh, an application that you wouldn't worry about a few a few a hundred of mils uh, uh, metal, but in a lot of cases where that becomes very uh, unlike uh, to use, and and we want to get rid of this. We don't want to have uh, a quarter wavelength extension of the waveguide. So we are going to introduce a transition that does not use, utilize uh, quarter wavelength back short. This is the transition uh, uh, with, uh, with all the uh, details of mechanical separation of the parts. But essentially what we have here, we have a, a two-sided BC board, printed circuit board, BCB. On one side that looks into the waveguide aperture, we have a just like we presented in the last video, in the previous video, we showed how we can use a probe in conjunction with a, uh, a resonating squ uh, square or rectangular batch to create um, a, a microstrip line transition or a suspended line transition like we did last time. Uh, except there we have used an additional cap in here that is a quarter wavelength placed on top of the, the probe. In this case, we're not placing a metal cap that is extension of the waveguide. What we're doing, we're introducing a short represented by this metal here on the BC board. This is basically the top layer. And what we have in here, we have, this is all metal printed with a little notch where the macro strip line goes in. That's the probe that we're gonna, this is where you pick up your signal and go off to the rest of your um, receiver or the transmitter, uh, wh whichever case it is, happens to be that you're using this for either transmitter or receiver, okay? And we have an another metallic um, window in here, and these are common via vias, okay? We place vias that will connect the top to the bottom ground, and these will connect with screws, of course, uh, to the uh, waveguide um, aperture. And that will act actually as a quarter wave uh, length, uh, a similar function to the quarter wave length back in short, okay? And we'll show in a minute in simulations that that is really what's happening. Pictorially, you can look at this, whether you're transmitting or receiving, and you can see how the TE10 mode is, transformed 
into a quasi TEM on a on a strip line, on a micro strip line or strip line in this case. Okay. Now, just to show you the the design parameters for this um, transition. Here's the the design parameters for the um, for the parasitic uh, batch. And what we have, we have the width and the length of this batch, basically. Of course, we do have the the standard dimensions of the waveguide, you know, be it Ka band, Ku band, or whatever band you're operating in. Uh, so we do have the dimensions, the AB, typical AB dimensions, AB dimensions for the waveguide. But in addition to that, we have the batch dimensions. And then we have also the spacing between these uh, vias. That's the S here, the spacing between these vias, because we don't want any signal to leak. Depending on the frequency, you have to make sure that these vias are um, uh, are, are uh, 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 many of them that will block the signal to leak through and want all the signal to reflect back. And then we have the probe itself, the length and width, and then we have the notch, this notch in here, we have a gap, what we call a gap, which is here, okay? Now sideways, if you look at this uh, transition, basically we have the waveguide in here, we have the square or rectangular batch in here, and then we have the probe that is here. Now the probe overlaps the patch by a parameter rho, and that rho plays a big role in the design. I will show you in a minute some publications where you can go back and basically design this based on the formulas and equations that are in there. That you, you can either hand calculate them or put them in MATLAB and, and program them to come up with these parameters. Or somehow start somewhere with some dimensions that are published and scale back to the frequency that you're operating at using parametric assignment of, of, of dimensions in the ANSYS HFSS and then steering these dimensions to the the uh, appropriate dimensions that, that will, will make it perform in the particular band that you're interested in. Pictorially, this is what the, uh, what the um, transition looked like. So we have the probe, we have a little inductive piece, just like last time I showed you, this is to cancel the capacitors in here. And then we have a quarter wavelength, okay, that matches the impedance looking into this uh, waveguide. And then we have the 50 ohm line, which is in this case, this. And this happens to be a back-to-back -back transition that we usually, that's the first thing we do. We need to characterize the transition. So we do, we design one and then we flip it over and then do the measurements and divide by two everything uh, in terms of incision loss, I mean, okay? So um, now, the, the this particular transition happens to be also uh, attractive for users you, to use with the face array antennas. Um, and um, this shows one where you can actually replicate the probe and 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 design a transition from waveguide to strip to macro strip line and a splitter, so you split the signal or combine. Either way, whether you're, if you're transmitting, you're combining, this is a two-way combiner and a transition. If you're receiving, this is a two, a two uh, this is a two-way uh, splitter and a transition. Likewise, you can do four also. And this becomes um, interesting, uh, interesting for cases where um, you would want to use it with arrays as I will show in a minute. So let's go into um, some of these publications that support this transition. There are several of them online. I just happened to pick up a few. This is 2019. And basically this is, um, introduces this transition. Okay, and uh, it uh, deals, it explains all these design parameters and have the equations and so forth. So you can refer to this here, and um, they use a little technique that broadens the this transition. These transitions, that's the, the price you pay for the uh, their simplicity and their low profile and and and, and uh, as a trade-off for not being bulky, 
without the quarter wavelength extension, uh, they're narrow band. So in this case here, they use a little technique just to broaden it a little bit. Another publication, here's one. And in this one, also the detail, all the, uh, the, uh, the design parameters and uh, so forth, just like that one, similar. So uh, now this one here, is one where it shows how you can actually use an array of waveguide fed microstrip antenna using this transition. So we have this transition, as you can see in here, and then we can have an array of batches. In this case, this is for radar, 70 gigahertz um, automotive radar for safety. And they uh, show all the details. If you're interested, uh, like take a look at this. Uh, and then the last one is the one that uses four of them, okay, for the same application. So I'm just gonna put these in here so that you can, some of you have enough time to grab the title. These are available from the IEEE conferences and database. And this one here, okay. And last but not least, this one here, okay. So, with this, let's go to HFSS and start looking at these. I happen to build these. So I built these. And the first thing what we're going to do is let's just review what the issue is. The issue is, like last times, what we have shown, we have a waveguide, okay? And then the waveguide has to interface with the transition to uh, the BC board in here in this case. The key thing was, is that we're always gonna be needing a quarter wavelength extension of the waveguide on top of the transition so that we can present open circuit to the probe and grab all the energy coming back into the board. And so, as you can see, this is bulky, it's mechanical, it's metal, it needs CNC ink. It would be nice to get rid of this and that's what we're gonna do. And let's just show that. So, and here is, oh, apologies. okay, here is the transition. Okay, let me just get rid of the electromagnetic field for right now. Uh -oh, okay, so what we have, we have a waveguide in here, okay? And then at the, the, the waveguide is terminated with a PC board, okay? That BC board has a, an array of vias, metal vias, connected, connecting the top to the bottom. It's a two layer board. And in this case, this is on Rogers 4003, the material. I just happened to pick that one up. You can pick anything you want appropriate for your frequency. So what we have, we have the square or rectangular batch in here. And then we have, like I said before, we, we showed, we have the probe and the gap. And this design in here, as you can see, it's all parameterized. So uh, you can you can design it this way, start a design and then go back and uh, run optometry on this and, and optimize all these dimensions uh, to your particular frequency. So I ran this, I, I excited this, of course, with the, on one side, we excited the waveguide Okay, with a wave in here, wave port. And then I excited the, um, the, the transmission line or the probe with a wave port that is this way, okay? Where the, uh, of course, we don't have an extension of metal. What you're seeing in here, let me just show you. What you see in here, that's actually a vacuum, okay? I just, have, I just wanted to create a, a vacuum a media for this so that I can attach this port to it. So we don't have metal here, as you can see. Metal stops at the board, at the board terminates. So let's look at the frequency response of this. And here is the frequency response. As you can see, now this one really, I mean, from a, a system point of view, you would want this system to it's really relatively narrow. So you can see that it's only from 28 to 30 gigahertz. And it's not really optimized right now. We, we, we have the loss a little bit 
the loss should come down to 0.5 dB uh, throughout the band. So this needs still needs to be optimized. Let's look at the E field and see how the E field is. Um, and like we did before, the E field comes in, the wave comes in here and then propagates, uh, hits the, um, the rectangular patch in there. And that then transforms the electromagnetic field to the uh, probe in here. And let's uh, animate this. You just spread, wrap this over here. Let's just look at it. From a, let's accelerate it a little bit so we can see. Okay, so you can see that it's going into the, how it's how the signal is hitting the square batch. And then the square batch, of course, radiating onto the, uh, the probe, okay? So. Let's just look at it uh, sideways. Let's look at it from the top, as you can see, how the probe, how the signal going in here uh, on the bottom. See where most of the energy is going in right here, and then let's look at it, uh, left side. And back in the face. all right, so so we have it. So now this is really narrow banded, and it, it could work for a lot of. Uh, situations where we are interested in a few gigahertz bandwidth only. And it's pretty simple because now, of course, now in a case like this, this the way you integrate this with the rest of your system is you have either a, um, a coaxial connection to this uh, microstrip line in here that fits uh, perpendicular to the waveguide side or you can extend this board and start building all of your circuitry on this board integrated. So now let's just uh, show a, another transition that is similar to the transitions that we did before. And that is basically using a, uh, a micro strip line, okay, going in and, and doing a little matching section with a probe, okay? And so this one, is just to show you that these by far are still the most superior uh, ones to use. And of course, now this distance in here, let me just show you the, uh, okay, so sideways. Now the distance from the probe, the middle of the probe to here, this is a quarter wavelength, of course. This is one of the probes that are um, uh, a class of probes that are uh, that, that are not as low profile as the one we just showed. And the advantage of this, of course, when you look at the performance, if you design it correctly and you optimize it, it becomes uh, very nicely done. Like this one shows from 24 gigahertz to 40 gigahertz with a return loss of less than 10 dB, okay? So you can see um, now, how this behaves now with the EM file, uh, basically on there, you can see that this one, let me see, this one is at what frequency? So this is, this is at 45 gigahertz, okay? And so you can, we can animate, uh, that's a little bit above the frequency that we want, but you can see now, how this works. Okay, so let's go back and just out of curiosity, uh, 35, we wanted to run it. This probably should run at 35. Okay. Um, uh, let's look at the frequency setup at 35. Okay. And let me rerun this. And this should take a couple of minutes to run. Okay, so we can see that it's already calculated the E field. 
starting to cackle. You get that right away, but you don't get the, uh, let's update this guy. Okay. Oh, it's calculating. Okay. All right, let's check and know where it is on term of convergence. Okay, it's still calculating, so let's give it some more time. In any case, that's basically what we get. Um, all right, so this animated. Okay, and here we go. You can see the animation of this. And of course the uh, frequency response is beautifully from 24 gigahertz to 40 gigahertz, okay? There you have it, gentlemen and ladies. Um, we, um, so we did wrap up with um, basically all of the uh, uh, We've got two stri strip line, suspended line, macro strip line transitions. I may have one more that I'm interested to run, but if you have any questions, reach out to me uh, regarding any of these designs. So what we go next is basically like I showed you in here, we will start looking at the next videos. We will be looking at the surface integrated waveguide um, devices. Basically we'll introduce the, the the transmission media itself, uh, model it, uh, present it, and then do the transition, because we have to transition from that surface integrated waveguide to a um, strip line or micro strip line, and then go off to the rest of the stuff, okay? Well, this is Dr. Mohammed Nizami. I hope you enjoyed your videos. You know, put like, share, whatever. Thank you very much, and have a great day. See you in the next video.